Hello and welcome to Pharmacy Pearls. I'm Greg Cummings, pharmacist and certified diabetes educator. Most smokers seeking treatment for smoking cessation make repeated quit attempts. As a result, an increasing proportion of continuing smokers will have tried these medications before. Unfortunately, abstinence rates are more than threefold lower for nicotine replacement therapy and twofold lower for bupropion when compared to initial treatment. In this edition of Pharmacy Pearls, we'll consider a study which examined the effectiveness of retreatment with varenicline to see how it compares in this regard. Please stay tuned to the end of the video for a link to the study. First of all, I have previously served as a consultant for Pfizer, conducting presentations on smoking cessation and participating in advisory meetings. The study under consideration was published in the peer-reviewed journal Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics in September 2014. It was industry-sponsored and was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized, multi-center clinical study consisting of a 12-week drug treatment phase followed by a 40-week post-drug treatment follow-up phase. Study participants were randomly assigned either varenicline or placebo. The dosing of varenicline was titrated according to the usual protocol, and compliance with the treatment regimen was confirmed by pill counts and patient self-report at each visit. Individual smoking cessation counseling was also provided to all participants. Smoking abstinence was assessed by patient self-report of no smoking, not even a puff, and no use of nicotine-containing products, confirmed by an exhaled carbon monoxide value of 10 parts per million or less. The primary study endpoint examined continuous abstinence rates for the last four weeks of the treatment phase, but other time frames, up to 52 weeks, were also considered. Eligible participants were at least 18 years of age or older, smoked at least 10 cigarettes per day during the four weeks before screening, had an exhaled carbon monoxide value greater than 10 parts per million at screening, had no quit attempts in the past three months, had previously taken varenicline for two or more weeks with the last dose taken at least three months before screening, and were motivated to stop smoking. Exclusion criteria included any previous significant adverse reaction to varenicline, previous participation in a varenicline study, severe COPD, history of cancer within the past five years, except cured basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma of the skin, clinically significant vascular disease in the past two months, history of a suicide attempt or any suicidal behavior in the past two years, or current suicidal ideation at screening or baseline, current depression or diagnosis or treatment of depression during the previous 12 months, lifetime diagnosis of psychosis, panic disorder, other anxiety disorders, or bipolar disorder, active alcohol or substance abuse or dependence, except for nicotine, during the previous 12 months, or the use of other smoking cessation or tobacco products, electronic cigarettes, marijuana, or illegal or street drugs during the study. Participant baseline characteristics were similar for the two treatment groups. 93% were Caucasian. The mean age was 47.5 years. Participants smoked a mean of 20 cigarettes per day for an average of 30 years and had a mean Fagerstrom test score of 5.6, corresponding to moderate dependence. 74% of participants reported three or more previous lifetime quit attempts, and all had tried using varenicline one or more times. Let's now take a moment to examine the study results for the primary endpoint. Once again, this consisted of continuous abstinence rates for weeks 9 to 12. 
according to study results, for every 100 people retreated with placebo for 12 weeks, 12 people will stop smoking and 88 people will continue smoking. The fact that roughly 12% of participants were able to quit with placebo could reflect the impact of smoking cessation counseling, which sought to help patients develop coping strategies for achieving and maintaining abstinence. By comparison, according to study results, for every 100 people retreated with varenicline for 12 weeks, 46 people will stop smoking and 54 people will continue smoking. Of the 46 people who are able to stop smoking, 12 people will stop regardless of treatment and 34 people will stop because of treatment with varenicline. We can also express the effect of varenicline retreatment in terms of a number needed to treat to achieve smoking abstinence. Specifically, for every three people retreated with varenicline versus placebo for 12 weeks, one additional person will achieve continuous abstinence for weeks 9 to 12 of treatment. But that's not all. Based on secondary endpoint data, we also know that for every six people retreated with varenicline, one additional person will achieve continuous abstinence for weeks 9 to 52 of treatment and follow-up. Importantly, these abstinence rates are consistent with those achieved by people taking varenicline for the first time, indicating that it maintains its efficacy during retreatment. The study also looked at the safety and tolerability of varenicline retreatment. It found that 75.5% of those taking varenicline experienced an adverse event versus 63.3% receiving placebo. 7.2% of varenicline users discontinued treatment due to tolerability versus 2.9% with placebo and 12.4% of varenicline users decreased their dose or temporarily stopped treatment versus 4.5% with placebo. The two most common adverse events for varenicline versus placebo were nausea, wherein the number needed to harm was 6, and abnormal dreams, which had a number needed to harm of 9. Ultimately, this was consistent with previous studies and reflects the product monograph. As an aside, in order to minimize these adverse events, patients should be counseled to take varenicline after eating and with a full glass of water. In summary, varenicline is effective and well tolerated in smokers who have previously taken it, with long-term abstinence rates comparable to those seen in people who have not taken it before. Therefore, if a patient is willing to try varenicline again, clinicians should be too. Thanks for watching. To read the study upon which this video is based, visit pharmacypearls.com slash retreatment. Please also show your support for Pharmacy Pearls by subscribing to my YouTube channel.